Me and these models shared such a unique experience, so I felt like it was only right to get to know them at least a little bit while I was working with them. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some things that I wish I knew before I entered the adult film industry. So let's get right into this. I have a bunch to share with you guys. Some kind of sensitive topics, but I think that this will resonate with some of you guys out there. First, I want to give a shout out to my very much appreciated Patreon members. Thank you guys so much for your support over there. And if you want to get to know me on a deeper level, definitely check out my Patreon, guys. My community is growing over there day by day, and I post weekly exclusive updates about my life that I don't talk about anywhere else. So check me out if you want to get to know me a little bit better on Patreon. What do you guys think about my haircut? I love the way that she did it this time. Um, she always kills it, but... Find yourself a good hairstylist if you haven't, because they really have a way of just rejuvenating you and just making you feel so much better about yourself than you were before. Alright guys, well as I said, I will be talking about five things that I wish I knew before I entered the adult film industry. Now I joined the adult film industry back when I was 19 years old in 2018, and I was in a really tough place in my life. and. I wasn't really in a place where I could go and get a regular job because I tried that already and it just didn't work out for me. So during this time I was webcamming with my roommate and I wanted to join the industry just to kind of boost my following and my viewership over there so that's what I did. And now fast forward, four years later, here we are. So let's get started. One of the first things I wish I knew before I joined the adult film industry is that dating and putting myself out there would take a backseat. And that really didn't bother me until recently. And it was part of my epiphany that I realized that my life was just wasting away and I wasn't getting the value out of my life that I wanted to get. I'll be 24 in May and I've worked in this industry for four years, and I can't say that I have one single friend in the industry. So that was a huge realization for me that helped me to come to the decision to finally leave the industry and announce that I'm ready to leave for the second time. Yes, I've announced in the past that I'm done with the industry, and I entered back into it in August, but I'm in a place now where I'm fully done with it. Like, I have... I have the enlightenment, I have the inspiration that I need to continue on with my journey. So I just started to get really comfortable with being lonely. And that sounds really sad, but I didn't focus on that. I was just focusing on having fun in Phoenix, and I was still just turning 21, so it was nice to have money to go out on the town with, and you know, just have a free schedule pretty much to do whatever, whenever. And I think that's one of the reasons I had such a good year in 2019, because for one, I turned 21, and for two, it was just like a fresh new world for me. I was still fresh into the industry, and I didn't have that much experience with the negative aspects of the industry, so I felt like I was on cloud nine. And I was just okay with being lonely and just hooking up here and there, not really focusing on relationships or getting to know anybody for that matter, mainly because I had been hurt before and I didn't want to subject myself to that again and just seem vulnerable to anyone. So I put up this wall of like, I just want to hook up. I just assumed that I was always going to be rejected if I tried to pursue somebody for a relationship or any kind of, you know, romance. I, I always just assumed that I was going to be rejected because... I figured, you know, who would want to date me? You know, I work in this kind of industry where I hook up with people for a living. How is anybody going to love me? But at that time, I just didn't care because I was just stacking up my money, spending my money, and having a good time. So the next thing I wish I knew is that I would either be forced out of the industry once my time was up, or I would have to leave on my own accord when I felt that it was right. I never really knew how difficult it would be to leave the industry because you think about it and you're like, who wants to stay in this? You know, who wants to do this for longer than they have to? 
at least in my mind, that's how I thought. So I just thought, oh, let me just see where it takes me, see what happens. And I just got comfortable with it. And then, you know, I started not focusing on certain things that are important to me, like dating and meeting friends and new social groups. I just didn't realize that it's not going to last forever. I knew it in the back of my head, but I didn't implement any plans for my future so I can be ready and prepared when I'm ready to leave the industry. So I was really just coasting, and that was part of the epiphany that I had recently in that I need to have a solid plan for my future because it's inevitable that I'm going to have to leave the industry one day. And I did not want to be forced out. I didn't want to have to leave with any kind of resentment or negativity in my heart or on my soul just because I've given so much of my heart and my soul to the industry. And I know it sounds funny because it's like, oh, how do you do that? It's just, you know, hooking up. And it's like, no, I've done so much more than just that. And I think my true fans can see that in my adult films. They can see that I really do give that fantasy and I give my all in each and every scene. And most models are not like that. <laughs> Let me tell you that. Most models are just there to give the bare minimum effort, get their check and go home. I, on the other hand, realize that these videos are going to be on the internet forever. So why not try to get what I can get out of them, you know, along with getting paid and utilize that to further my plans. So yeah, I didn't realize that I needed a solid plan for when I was ready to leave. I didn't realize how difficult it would be to come to that decision of realizing that it's time to go. Because you think in your mind, why am I giving this up? This is such a good job. I get to travel. I get to meet different walks of life. And I get to sit around, you know, and get paid for it. And it's like, no, 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 no. All money is not good money. And it's such a cliche, but it's so true, guys. When you start letting that build up and build up and build up inside of you, it just starts to weigh on your soul. At least for me, I'm speaking about my experience and things that I wish I knew and what led me to this video. Just getting myself to the place in my mind where I have mentally accepted that my time in this industry is up and whoever chooses to continue following me along on this journey is welcome into my life and whoever doesn't want to continue and follow my journey is free to go. Once I came to that conclusion, I was just filled with so much drive to get my plan implemented, my website. So let's move on to the next thing that I wish I knew. The next thing I wish I knew is that most other models are low vibrational, meaning I struggled to have any kind of intelligent conversation with most of the models that I worked with. Not all of them. I'm not going to rule out all of them because I have worked with one or two that I wouldn't mind seeing again. The others are just not my kind of people. They're just guys that are in different parts of their lives or different age groups even that I can't even relate to from just different walks of life. And in theory, you would think, oh, that's awesome. That's such a great way to learn about different people and different backgrounds. But no, guys, most of these guys that are there working aren't interested in having small talk or any kind of conversation that reveals their personal life. I was always very open with everybody and willing to share pretty much everything. So I was always trying to get to know who I was working with like the day before our scene. And most of the time that just didn't prove to really matter. Now there are a few scenes where there has been chemistry, but guys, that's mainly because I was physically attracted to the model. It's nothing to do with their personality or anything like that because I never got to know their personality most times. So after I realized that these guys don't care, they're just here for the check, I stopped having conversation. I stopped trying to get to know these guys. And I kind of just gave them the same energy that they were giving me because I was getting hurt. Me and these models shared such a unique experience, so I felt like it was only right to get to know them at least a little bit while I was working with them. When you think about it, we're sharing a bedroom with like little twin beds, just like an army barracks. I called it summer camp for a while. And that was just, I guess, a way of me protecting myself 
rather than thinking about all of the negative aspects of what I had to go through and the mental hurdles that I had to jump through in order to even get paid for the work. So yeah, guys, you probably heard me say I never made any friends throughout the four years that I've worked in this industry, and that's because nobody is in this industry to make friends. Nobody cares about you. The producers don't care about you. The photographers don't care about you. So I'm sorry about that noise if you guys hear that. The landscapers just turned on their mower, and usually they go on Tuesday, and I don't know why they're here on Thursday, but whatever. We're gonna keep this going. So overall, I just wasted so much time. So much time that I could have spent meeting lifelong friends or had amazing life-changing experiences. So the next thing I wanna talk about that I wish I knew is the fact that I became very desensitized to romance and hooking up. And as a guy in his early 20s, that is something I never planned for or thought that I would say. I've always been a very flirty person, especially after I graduated high school, and I thought that was a huge thing that was gonna help me in the industry. And one of the reasons that I thought the industry would be a good fit for me, and it was a good fit for me, but looking back now, I don't think I would ever do it again. <laughs> if I didn't do it in the first place, I wouldn't be where I am now. So I don't like to go back in time and you know think about things I could have done differently because it's all part of destiny. So true romance became very blurred to me. I always kind of related hooking up or dating to working. And how sad does that sound? Like, dating and meeting friends and meeting other people in your life is, a, like, one of the biggest parts of life. Networking and sharing your energy with people and falling in love. And those were all things that I was robbing myself of by working in this industry. I was so desensitized to hooking up. I, I had no yearning or motivation to put myself out there on dating apps or hook up or anymore for that matter. So as soon as something became difficult for me, like I just gave up. So if some guy was trying to play hard to get, I would just be like, all right, <laughs> I tried. And I'm not wanting to be like that anymore. But I do want to fall in love one day, and working in this industry is going to make that extremely difficult, if not impossible, for me. So that's one of the main reasons I'm leaving, is because I want love in my life. I'm a loving person. I deserve love, and I deserve to love somebody else. So leaving the adult film industry is going to open up a whole new world to me, because I'm going to allow it to. The last thing that I wish I knew before I joined this industry is the fact that it would cause me to feel very alienated from society. In the beginning, I was okay with that because I really didn't want to be part of normal society and I didn't want to fit in like everybody else. And I still don't want to fit in, but I also don't want to feel gross when I'm at Target or grocery shopping or at a gym, you know, I feel gross sometimes. I feel like if people knew what I really did as a job, they would be disgusted by me, they wouldn't want to be around me. That might just be the cynic in me or negative thinking inside of my head, but I'm a very real person and I like to see things as they are, not as I want them to be, so I don't want to feel alienated anymore. I don't want to feel like gross and so different from everybody else. and. I was walking Lucky the other day and there was construction workers here at my apartment complex. And if you guys don't know, I was an honor Spanish student in high school, so I can understand Spanish pretty well. And one of the guys said to his co-workers, does he work? Like in a rude tone. So it was just things like that that I was getting really tired of. And I still really enjoy my schedule and having freedom to do the things I want to do and just being able to move around certain things so I can plan around anything really I have such a free workable schedule and I wouldn't give that up for anything I don't even let myself get into those mindsets of thinking like oh am I not a productive citizen or am I not doing anything good for society am I not putting out good energy into the world. And it all brought me back to working in the adult film industry. And I realized that this was a way for me to get to the next step back when I started. Now I'm at that next step. So now I need to take the next step and leave this behind because I don't need it anymore. And it's only doing harm to me now. 
yeah, the money was good, but I don't need the money like I used to. And I'm extremely grateful for that. But I also have to pat myself on the back for that because I work really hard and nobody's ever going to take that from me. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know which one of these lessons stood out to you. This was kind of a difficult video for me to make and one of those videos where I had to kind of dive into my memories and emotions, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Also give this video a like, it really helps out a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!